This is the Arturia Keylab 61 Mark III, the latest version of their popular MIDI controller keyboard. It's jam-packed with the kind of features a modern musician needs in the studio. And in this version, they've added something really significant. They've also taken something away. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. There's a lot to discuss with this keyboard, not only about the features that are actually on it, but also with the significant software that comes with it as well. Now, some of this you can read about in the spec sheet, some you can see in photos, but I wanna tell you about my experience with this keyboard. Some things you just have to touch and feel. Now, one of those things on a keyboard is, well, the keyboard. It's the keys where you spend most of your time. Never mind that fancy new feature that you want me to discuss later on in this video. It's the keyboard where you express yourself. And there's a few things to help you along with that. First of all, they're velocity sensitive and they have aftertouch. They also have release velocity sensitivity, which is not a feature you necessarily find on all other keyboards. Now, in terms of quality, I would describe these as good to high quality synth keys. They've got a nice solid feel about them and they have a nice natural springiness to them as well. Now in case you don't like the sensitivity of these keys out of the box, of course you can adjust the velocity. Now you can either do that with the included software or I would say my preferred method is to do it on the keyboard itself because that has been made much, much easier with that bright new fancy feature that we're still not gonna talk about just yet. Now you may choose to use the pads for your performance and I found these ones to be, well, just about the same as any other Arturia pad I've tried in the past. That's to say they're good but probably not the best ones around. Now they are both velocity and pressure sensitive, so there's plenty of room for some expression in there. But I think interestingly, on this particular version, there's 12 pads. Now that's four more pads than the essential version, so it's definitely an upgrade. However, it's four less pads than the previous version of this keyboard, the Mark II. Now I pondered on this for a bit, as you do, and I realized that over the many years that I've been using pads in my recordings. I probably have never used all 16 pads when they've been available anyway, but that might be important to you. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. One thing you won't be disappointed with on this keyboard is the quality of the controls. The faders, for example, they feel quite nice as you push them up and down, nice and solid, and they've got that kind of cushioned feel to them as you use them. The endless encoders above that feel really solid, maybe the most solid I've ever felt. They've got that slightly stiff feeling to them. There's a little bit of resistance, and I quite like like that. By the way, with both these faders and these encoders here, they're touch sensitive, meaning you just have to touch them to see their current value on that screen that we're not gonna talk about quite yet. Now on the left hand side, we've got our pitch and modulation wheels. These appear to be made of metal. I say that because they look like they're made of metal and they're slightly cold to the touch. And all of this just adds to a general feel of quality with this keyboard. <laughs> I promise you we're going to talk about that significant new feature in just a second but first we need to talk about the back panel on the back panel you'll find your USB-C connection so you can hook up to your computer and most of the time that's where you're going to get the power from as well although you can choose to use an external power supply if you wish there's also a couple of MIDI connections there in and out as well as aux expression and sustain connections for your various pedals as well but there's quite a number of connections missing on this new version that were there on the Mark II version. Most notably the CV connections which you'd use to hook up to sort of analog synths and things. Now I reckon that less than 1% of you will miss those features and I accept that for that 1%, this could be a deal breaker. But I think Arturia have done this for very, very good reasons, which I'm actually gonna discuss right at the end of this video. I reckon the three and a half inch full color screen is the most notable new addition to this 
keyboard. And I'm so glad Arturo have done it because they were kind of falling behind the competition in this regard. Now, it's not just nice eye candy. I think it actually improves your workflow significantly. We're especially going to see that later on when we look at the software which is included with this keyboard. But even for more mundane things like when you're adjusting your controls and you're getting that instant feedback with their values, that makes it much more pleasant. And then when you go into things like the settings, oh my goodness, it makes things so much easier than before, especially with things like, say, those velocity curves that I was talking about earlier. What it means is you're going to spend a lot more time doing it directly on the keyboard and not having to resort to the software where they provide and that's a big workflow bonus. I also find that it makes certain features like the ones we're about to talk about much more fun to use. You can find the chord feature on most if not all Arturia keyboards and it means that you can play whole chords just with a single note and in the past if you were really determined you could get some pretty decent results from this. If you were pretty determined, I have to say that if you've got a small screen or perhaps no screen at all, features like this can be less than intuitive. But with this new color screen, it's so much easier and kind of fun, if I'm honest with you. You simply go in and set up the voicings for your chords. And then if you combine it with the scale and perhaps the strum feature, I reckon you can get some pretty interesting results. The same is true with the arpeggiator feature. It's so much easier to set up when you've got this color screen. And if you combine it with the chord and the scale feature, well, have a look at what I can do with one finger. Any MIDI controller worth its salt is going to give you at least some control over your door. You don't want to have to keep reaching for your mouse or your computer keyboard in the middle of a session. If you go into the settings on this keyboard, there's a list of common door profiles for you to choose from and it makes the setup that much easier. But if your door isn't there, there's also MCU and Huey modes to choose from and that's going to make almost every door compatible with this keyboard. Now in terms of the actual control Controls where you've got dedicated transport controls, you've got things like metronome control, uh, being able to switch on loops, save, and the all important undo, because let's face it, you're going to need that quite a lot. Now the faders and the encoders will control faders on your mix or in your console on your door. And because we've got nine faders here, the ninth one in my experience is dedicated to the master bus in your door, which is really kind of handy. Now I haven't tried this with a whole bunch of doors, but I have used it with Studio One and most of the features worked. Okay, it's certainly good enough for me. Um, transport controls, the faders, saving, undoing, all of that worked. I also tried it with Cakewalk and because it's got MCU mode, even with this sort of unsupported door, so to speak, most of the features actually worked and it wasn't that difficult to set up. <laughs> Included with this keyboard, you also get Arturia's Analog Lab Pro. Not a cut down or a light version, but the full version worth $199. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's basically a collection of over 2,000 presets, including sounds like acoustic pianos, electric pianos, classic analog and digital synths, and there's even presets from instruments from Arturia like pigments and their augmented series. Now the color screen and the navigation on this keyboard are tightly integrated with Analog Lab Pro and make it an absolute joy to use. Not only can you search for and select various different instruments, 
but you can also control parameters of those instruments using the faders and the encoders here. And as I said earlier, these faders are touch sensitive. So as soon as you touch them, you'll see which parameter of this particular instrument you're controlling. This makes this process so lovely. I've got to say, you spend way less time operating your computer because you can do most of it from the keyboard itself. The workflow is just insanely good in my opinion. It's not the only instrument from Arturia that you get deep control with as well. We'll be talking about another couple in a moment. As well as analog labs, you also get some pretty decent software included to easily sort of change the settings and upgrade the firmware and things like that with this keyboard. It's very visual and kind of easy to use. As well as that, you get a whole bunch of other instruments and some effects. Things like the Mini V instrument from Arturia, Piano V, augmented strings, a plate reverb from them. You even get a piano from Native Instruments. Now I've done a quick calculation and I've calculated that you get close to $1,000 worth of software with this keyboard. We're going to talk about the price of this keyboard in just a moment, but a quick hint, it's less than $1,000, like substantially less than $1,000. Before we talk about the subject nearest and dearest to your heart, the price, we have to talk about build quality. And really, there's not much change here. The build quality is excellent. It almost always is with Arturia anyway. It's got a reasonably sort of heavy feel to it because it's got a metal chassis, but the top part is made of a really nice quality hard plastic. And as I mentioned earlier, all of the controls and things feel really nice. You also get these kind of fake wooden ends that you get with Arturia instruments. I say they're fake. I think they're made of Bakelite or something like that. They kind of feel like real wood. Maybe they are actually, I don't know. Uh, but that's that always looks nice and classy. And I believe as well as the white version, you're gonna get the black version at launch as well. But in a nutshell, build quality for this model is excellent. So in a nutshell, they've given you a fancy schmancy new color screen and a few controls to give you deep integration with their software but they took away some of the pads and connections from the back. Why did they do that? Why not just keep the pads and the connections, give you a lovely color screen and everyone would be happy? Well, I don't think everyone would be happy with the likely price of that instrument. I reckon Arturia have made a strategic decision here to make sure the price is at least comparable to the previous version. We'll talk about what that price is in just a moment. But first of all, let's discuss the competition. I think the nearest competition to this is the Native Instruments Control S61 Mark III. Also, an incredibly high quality keyboard with a great color screen and deep integration with their software. Now that keyboard currently costs 849 US dollars and it doesn't even have any pads whatsoever or of the, any of those fancy connections on the back. Now the previous version of this keyboard cost $549 at the time of making this video and I happen to know that at launch this keyboard is going to cost $599, a full $250 cheaper than the nearest competition. You've got to say that is great value for money. Now, I've got to be clear on this. I'm not being paid by Arturia, okay? This video is not sponsored by them. They don't have any input as to what I say, etc. And look, you may think I'm a corporate shill or something, but I actually think that the features and the quality just speak for themselves. It's a little bit of a no-brainer. If I'm gonna come up with a title for this video, it should be something like um, probably the, ve the best value 61 key MIDI controller keyboard of 2024. It's probably getting a bit long, isn't it? I'll go for a different title, probably something much more mundane, I suppose. But anyway, I've loved using this keyboard. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video.